And then I remember the last time I put that on, and some lady said, yeah, but what about your gavel? Well, yes, we have my, I have my That's gavel. That's the second favorite part. <laughs> so. Oye, oye, oye. All those having business before the probate court and then for the county of Worcester, draw near. Give your attention and you will be heard. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my obligation as the judge in this case to give you a very brief summary of the facts that are involved in the case. Uh, as you may have heard from others, uh, this is a case by, this is a case being brought by Tom, the executive of the estate of his deceased Aunt Mary. Uh, he is suing Kathy, uh, who, who was a surviving joint owner of a bank account with Mary at the time of Mary's death. Uh, you, you're going to have to decide at the end of, these, of this case whether Mary is entitled to keep the money that was in the joint bank account or whether the funds should be transferred back to Tom as the executor so that he can divide that money as was specified in the will. The will says that, all, that, that Tom and, the other, and his three sisters, the, the uh, four nieces and nephews of Mary, were to divide everything equally, share and share alike. Uh, uh, counsel, what, the way this is going to work is we're going to have two-minute openings by each attorney, um, plaintiff first and defendant second. Then we're going to have witnesses. Uh, we're going to have examination and cross-examination of three witnesses. Uh, and then each lawyer will do a four-minute summary. After that's done... I'm going to give you jury instructions after you've heard all the facts because you're obliged to decide who's telling the truth and who isn't and what the facts are. I'm going to tell you how you should apply the law of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to those facts. And then I'm going to ask you for your verdict. And then while you're making that decision, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how Mary, rest her soul, could have avoided this terrible fight among the nephew and nieces that she really loved. Uh, with that, counsel... Thank you very much, Your Honor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I'd like to thank you for your time here this afternoon. As jurors, you play an incredibly important role in our judicial system. Today, you're going to hear the story of Mary and her opportunistic niece, Kathy. Mary was 85 years old and suffering from macular degeneration when she died from a heart attack in December of 2009. At that time, her niece, Kathy, had moved in with her. Kathy needed a place to stay. Kathy couldn't pay her own bills. Kathy was greatly in debt, and Mary helped her out by providing her a place to stay. Now, Kathy will want you to believe that she helped Mary and took care of Mary. But I will suggest to you that the evidence will suggest otherwise. Kathy got the bright idea to take Mary to the bank and have Kathy put on Mary's joint bank account. But the evidence is going to show that Mary really didn't understand what she was doing, that she was confused by the process, and at a minimum, she really just wanted to put Kathy's name on for convenience so that Kathy could help her make deposits and to pay her bills. The evidence is going to suggest that Tom, the highly respected executor of the estate, who was a medical professional, that he previously fulfilled a similar function for Mary and that he previously had assisted her help pay her bills. The evidence is going to show that the bank did not follow proper procedure in putting Mary's bank on the account and did not do its due diligence in ensuring that Mary truly understood what she was doing when she put Kathy's name on the bank account. The evidence is going to show that Kathy is an artist and that she's really never been financially responsible in her life. The evidence is also going to show that Mary intended her four nieces and nephews, Tom and his three sisters, including Kathy, to be treated equally. And the evidence that will be in support of that is the fact that Mary's will left all of her other assets to the four beneficiaries equally. Thank you very much for your attention, and we trust that at the end of the trial, you will make a fair and just decision. Thank you, Counsel. Counsel for the defense. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here today. My name is Mike Christie. I represent, in this case, Kathy, who's sitting here next to me. And you have a difficult choice today. 
you have a difficult job. The evidence that you're going to hear, and that the evidence that I believe you will find to be compelling, is that Mary wanted Kathy to have the funds in the bank account, that it was Mary's intent when she put Kathy's name on the bank account, that that money <coughs> go to Kathy when Mary passed away. The evidence is going to show that Kathy and Mary had a special bond, a special bond that was based on their love for art, that was based on the time they spent together. The evidence will also show that there was no bond between the plaintiff and Mary. There was no bond at all. The evidence is going to show that the plaintiff, while empowered to take care of Mary, did absolutely nothing. The evidence will show that Kathy, on the other hand, welcomed Mary, took care of her, gave up her career, her dream job of a professional artist, to take care of Mary. The evidence is also going to show that as part of that arrangement, <coughs> Kathy bought a car that Mary paid for. They used that car together so that Kathy could bring Mary to her medical appointments to pick stuff up, or you know what, just when they wanted to go for a ride to look at the foliage, because that's the type of relationship they had. And I believe at the conclusion of our presentation of the evidence, the inescapable conclusion will be that Kathy is entitled to the funds in the bank account because that's what Mary wanted. Thank you very much. <laughs>